All right, today I'm going to share with you a tool that's going to help you set internal benchmarks that's going to make sourcing a lot easier. Okay, I know we all have a problem when we go out sourcing of, hey, is this item going to be profitable enough for me to go ahead and jump into it and purchase it? And there's always that issue out there of like, hey, am I wasting my time with this one? Does this item fit my business model? And today I'm going to share with you guys a spreadsheet. It's so simple that's going to help you set some internal benchmarks that you're going to be able to keep in your mind when you go out to the thrift stores, when you're online sourcing, when you're going to garage sales, wherever, wherever you're getting product and wherever you're sourcing, it's going to help you make your job so much easier. So what I did is I made a spreadsheet that's going to help you go through your item costs, what the sales price is that's potentially out there for that item, your shipping costs, what all the processing fees, category fees, and then determine out what is your net profit and then your margin percentage for that item. And the goal is for me to do this across multiple categories, multiple scenarios for myself and for you to do that as well. So you know where your floor is in your business and actually how profitable you are on each item uh, before you're actually going out there and purchasing it. The main thing for this is to know where your floors are, right? So when you are purchasing an item, you want to know how much can I spend on average for this item uh, and what is the lowest that I'm willing to sell it for and does that item fit then in your business model. So this is going to help you shape your business, especially the bottom items of your business and determine where is that cutoff mark? Where is that floor for your business? Because a lot of times, I know myself, I'll be buying items to be like, okay, I could buy it for this cheap and I could sell it for this cheap. And does it really make sense for me? I don't know. I'm not doing the full math on there. I'm not processing all the fees on there. I'm looking at the buy cost and the sell cost. I think I know shipping in my head, but you really need to take some time, look at the numbers and see if it makes sense for you. So let me take you through an example here. I'm going to show you one of my bread and butter categories and just thinking through the floors for myself. For my store, one of my bread and butter categories is DVDs, as you guys probably know from following me. And what I'm going to do is look at what my item costs are commonly. And I typically get single DVDs for around $1.29. That is usually the sticker price at the local good Goodwill uh, that I'm sourcing at. So I'm going to put $1.29 in there. And I know my shipping costs for medium mail for under 16 ounces is $2.89. So I'm going to have to think about what do I want as my floor for what my sales price is going to be uh, going out there. Um, right now, I've been thinking in my head $11.95 is where I want to be selling it at. Uh, just based off of when I was doing numbers in my head. Uh, so I'm putting that in there just for to get an idea on there. I take 30 cents off for eBay's processing fee. And then there's a category final value fee out there as well. Most categories is 12.35%. But for DVDs and media, it is 14.35. So you want to know what that value is for you. And I'll show you guys later where you can find it. But for the majority of your items, it's going to be... 12.35%. And that's what I have in here that you're going to be able to adjust. Um, so just keep that in mind. Okay, one thing I want to highlight in here is when I am calculating my sales price, it is factoring free shipping in there. If you are not doing free shipping on your item and you are doing like a calculated or you're doing an estimated price that you feel like is going to be pretty accurate for where it is, so it's going to be a wash for how much you're paying for it versus how much you're charging it. Um, you're going to want to go in here and change your shipping costs down to zero. So you're going to wipe out shipping altogether because you're already doing a pass through when it comes to it. Now, if you're doing free shipping on here, uh, you're going to need to make sure you're accounting for that cost on there because your shipping is inside your sales price. You're going to make sure you got to take that shipping cost out for yourself as well. So just one little caveat on there based on how you're doing your pricing uh, for your stores. Um, that's just one thing you want to look out for. All right, so after entering all my variables in there in the spreadsheet, there's only four that you need to worry about. Uh, it comes out that my net profit is $5.76, and my profit margin percentage is 
so those are actually really good numbers for me when it comes to DVDs, um, especially for one that would have been on my low end. And so this is going to be my floor. I know at the most common DVD level uh, that I buy, if I sell it at $11.95, I'm typically going to make $5.76. Um, shipping should not go up on that because it's usually always under that pound for me. Um, the category price is not going to change. Sometimes my buy costs will actually go a little bit lower if I have a discount on there. So I may have a 20% discount, which will bring it to a little bit over a dollar, like a dollar two. Uh, but I know I'll be able to make five seventy six dollars on each item uh, if I'm sourcing at Goodwill. Now, if I'm sourcing at another spot that may be $2, now I'm getting down to around $5 of margin. So I know I'm still okay with that if I'm sourcing it at a store that's going to be $2. Now, say I'm looking at a DVD set that may cost a little bit more. Maybe it's going to be $4. So when I look at this one, I see that I'm putting a $4 investment in, and I'm only making $3.05 um, with a profit margin of 25%. Now, if this was going into Amazon, I'd probably be a little more comfortable with that. But since this is eBay, since I am handling every item, right, I am uh, taking pictures of every item, cleaning every item, prepping it, uh, pulling, packing, shipping, listing, um, $3 is a little bit low for me. So I think for myself, if I'm buying a set, or something where I actually put $4 in for a DVD. Uh, let's look at this. Um, $14.95 feels a lot better. Um, I'm back at that five sixty dollars uh, range when it comes to my profit margin. So it does feel better there. Uh, and depending on the velocity of the item, which I'll get into in a whole nother video, I think this is good. Like if it's an item for me that is going to be uh, a quick flip for me. Uh, these are easy for me to process myself. Um, then I'll be okay with it. If this is an item that no one has ever bought before or maybe one sale in 90 days and there's five listed, I would pass on it if this was uh, the highest uh, that I think I could get for that item. I would pass on it for sure. Um, just because I don't want to sit on something that may take 90 days for me to flip uh, potentially for this type of margin. But getting into sell-through rates and how I factor that into pricing and purchase pickups, that'll be a whole nother video, so be on the watch out for that. I'll be putting that one out probably in a week or two as well. So the next thing I want to share with you is just another tab on this uh, sheet for you guys, and it has the category final value fees in there uh, for all the common categories that you'll be finding and mostly uh, purchasing from. This was straight copied in from eBay's website. I just did a copy paste right into the spreadsheet and it actually came out pretty nice. Uh, so here you're going to have all your categories, and then on the far right you're going to have what the final value fee is. Uh, for that. And as I said before, majority of them is going to be 12.35% uh, plus that 30 cents per order. Uh, so you just want to make sure you're putting that in there when you're calculating everything. There are categories like shoes where if you go over $100 for your order, uh, you don't have to pay any fees. So eBay is trying to get that stuff from people that are selling through StockX and other sites at a higher uh, price so they're trying to stop you from going over there and selling so uh, just really pay attention to those uh, fees on there but for majority of them you're going to be at the 12.35 percent so the remaining tabs that i have on this sheet are different categories that i looked at for myself we already went over dvds before but as you can see i locked myself in at that 11.95 as my floor so now i know every time i go in there and i'm looking up comps and I'm looking up items that have free shipping on it, right? Because this is including free shipping into that sales price for myself. That is going to be $11.95 is my absolutely lowest that I'm willing to sell if I'm buying at this $1.29 price. And let's say I got for free, I put it in here. Um, I feel like I'm going to be comfortable at $10 for that if I'm doing free shipping. Uh, I'm still over $5 for each one. And... Probably if it was under $10 for myself, even if it was free or a few pennies or 
a quarter or two um, that I paid for it. I think $10 is my floor. Everything else, I would probably just try to bundle up and sell at a higher ASP. Uh, but my, for myself, if it was something for free, I would go uh, $10 just on my business model. Now, if I got these all in bulk and I got like 100 of the same item um, and I'm able to just do one listing super quick, I may be going down to like $8 on there, right? Just because uh, replenishables, I'm able to turn it, um, move items quickly, turn it over. Um, I'll make less on that uh, knowing that I didn't have to put as much effort into getting that item. Now I'm gonna look at the video game category for myself. Uh, commonly, I'm buying it at $3.29. Uh, my shipping cost, I'm putting an average of $3.50 in there. I'm looking right now, based on the numbers, of making my floor $14.95. Now, based on the final value fee of $12.35, I would come out with a net profit of $6 on average for this. Now, in the past, I was saying my floor around $11.95 for these items, and it comes out to $3.38. Now, if this is an item that I have already listed, um, and I could just add it to my inventory and not have to do anything other than just going into my listing and add another quantity. You know, I may be fine with that. Um, that's still a low profit uh, amount for me for the effort that I'm putting in there. I feel that that $14.95 is going to be a better floor for me. And I'm going to implement that on myself going forward just based on the item costs I'm normally sourcing at. Now, if I find it for $1.29, if someone prices it cheap for me, I get it around the $1.29 they're selling at my Goodwills. Um, that's going to bring it up to $8. You know, for those, since I took two off my cost, I'm willing to take two off my sales price. So if I do find it for around that dollar range, um, I think I'll be okay with myself going in at $12.95. So this is why this spreadsheet and going through this exercise is really good for you. You're going to be able to do that mental math now at the store because you have this benchmark, right? So in my head, I had, I was okay with 329 because that's the common price that I'm going to see on these games, uh, the majority of the stores around here in Phoenix. So if I know that and that's going to give me my uh, 14 95 sales price that I'm comfortable selling those at. I know if I go up, right, if the cost goes up to 429, I'm looking more for a 1595 item. It goes down to 229, I'm looking for a 1395 item. This is going to make it a lot easier when you're looking at the items, understanding, okay, does this fit within my parameters and am I comfortable with this item? So for myself, you know, this is going to really make it easier when I'm looking at the shelf and I pull up and look at comps and I'm like, oh, do I, I don't, I, no, I already have the mental benchmark in my head of, no, this does not qualify for what I'm looking to do. I'm going to pass on it. All right, let's look at another category here. I'm going to look at clothing. I don't sell clothing that much anymore or I haven't been sourcing it as much anymore. But when I am out there and I do find something, I want to set myself some parameters for looking at this category. So I was playing around with it earlier, and I put in an item cost around $5. Um, that's probably low, depending on it. If it's a t-shirt here, I'm probably getting between like $0.99 cents and $4.99. If it's a, a nicer shirt... Um, it's probably like eight or ten dollars depending on what it is so I just put five in there just right now so I can start thinking through parameters on it I put a sales price of thirty dollars and I put shipping cost of 450 I feel like that's kind of average between four and five bucks uh, when it comes out to, to it for me uh, processing fees in there and then the final value fee in there as well it's the normal one so profit margin on here would be 1650 uh, I'm gonna play around with this a little more like say I found something for ten dollars for ten dollars I'd make eleven fifty now for myself since I am not as motivated to sell in this category right now um, I feel in knowing that my sell through rates are a lot lower I don't really feel comfortable with that so if I was going to increase it to a purchase of ten I think I would want to make 
at least uh, $15 profit on there, which would be that $35 sales price. So for me, now I know in my head, um, that's probably my floor if I'm paying $10 for any item right there. Just knowing what my shipping costs, my fees are, just to be able to make that $15 profit. Um, now, typically for myself, I'm aiming probably for about $40 to $50 on there, but if I feel like there's a good sell-through rate on it, this 35 uh, feels appropriate. Now let's quickly look at shoes. It's similar for myself with clothing. Um, I'm not buying it that often, but when I am, I am cherry picking. So I want to have a floor set out for me. Um, I put an average item cost of $10. I put $50 for my sales price. I put average shipping cost of $12 because I just don't know because I'm on the West Coast. If I'm shipping East, it's going to get a little more expensive for me. So I just put $12 on there. Um, processing fee, 30 cents. Uh, the category fee, right, since I'm not qualifying for the crazy discount on there, I'm not getting anything over $100 uh, as my average item that I'm finding. Uh, this would give me a profit of $21. Um, so I feel like that is fair for me when it comes to shoes. Um, getting that, uh, even if I was down to 45 is okay, but I think 50 for myself, for just the effort, for myself internally, I'm I'm taking into account uh, any type of cleaning they may have to do with them. Um, I'm not sure how much I'm gonna have to sit on them, but ideally uh, anything over $50 with a sales price with free shipping, uh, I feel like I'd be okay with with $10. So now I know if I find a pair for $5, uh, I'd be okay going down to $45 for my sales price on there. Um, if I find a pair for free, I'm okay with $40. So it's just helping me set, set some benchmarks uh, in my mind when I go out to the store of, hey, am I okay with picking up this item, sitting there, uh, and making that decision process a lot quicker. All right, I'm going to make this free for you guys. I'm going to put a link down below in the description of this video. It's going to give you access to it. All you have to do is go in there, request it, um, and I'm going to give you a view-only uh, copy of it, and then what you have to do is go in there, uh, make a copy for yourself to your own drive, and then you're going to have access to do whatever you want with it. If you go in, take maybe about 20, 30 minutes, uh, think through the different type of categories, items that you're selling in your store, uh, typical costs that you are finding out there, um, typical sales price that you're selling for on the low, low end. You are going to be able to streamline your sourcing process, maybe get rid of some items that you don't even want to bother with anymore that you, maybe you did buy, you just want to redonate um, or sell locally on a different platform or something else. This is going to make it a lot easier for you to streamline your sourcing, your business, and just your, your sanity in general. I know for myself, it's going to help me out just because whenever I go into a store now and I am looking up comps, if I see something where I don't think I could typically get that $11.95 on a dollar DVD that I'm purchasing that I'm not even going to buy with it. I'm going to just put it right back on the shelf. Thank you guys for joining me once again. If you're new to my channel, make sure to hit the subscribe button down below because I put out reseller content two to three times a week for you guys. Any type of tips or tricks, bolos, all that type of stuff to help you improve your business. Also, make sure you hit the thumbs up for me on there. It really helps me out on the algorithm. And then also put in the comments down below what type of video you want me to put out next. Is there a topic you want me to hit on? Is there something that you guys are having problems with that you need help on as well? So thank you guys for joining me, and I'll see you guys next time. Bye.